you. For paying the ultimate price for our debt, we say thank you. Father, for us to be alive today, we say thank you. For all the things you've done for us, we say thank you. We cannot tell it all, Lord Jesus. Accept our worship this morning. As you go to hear from you this morning, we pray. Speak to us yourself in the name of Jesus. Lord God of heaven, anoint this voice of mine and speak expressly to your people. Let no one leave this place the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. And for in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Let's jam our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ as we have our seat. Let's put those hands together. We are not doing as if we are actually seeing today. Let's put those hands together for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Please let's have our seat majestically in the presence of the Lord. It's a great pleasure for me to be standing before these great people of God this morning. I'm not taking it very lightly and I'm appreciating God first of all for the opportunity. I know it's not a right. It's just by his grace I'm standing and I return all glory unto him. I want to thank the pastorate as well for this great opportunity. Thank you so much for believing in me and for giving me this opportunity. And I pray that every one of us here will not leave this place the same in the name of Jesus. It's Christmas, so let's smile, please. Your faces are not encouraging. Hallelujah. Let's smile, let's smile, and welcome your neighbor to the uh, 2018 Christmas service and love feast. And be a prophet, uh, be a prophet to your neighbor by telling more how you that have seen today, you will see many more to come. In the name of Jesus. Prophesy to your neighbor, you will see many more of it in the name of Jesus. If Christ tarries, you will see many more of Christmas in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bible briefly to the book of John chapter 15 verse 13. John chapter 15 verse 13. Today is our Christmas service and also doubles as our law feast day. Hallelujah. Christmas service stroke law feast day. So let's quickly read uh, that scripture, Mark chapter 15 verse 13. It says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. Basically, that is what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and I over 2,000 years ago. And he's telling us that greater love than this has no man than to lay down his life for his fellow brothers and sister. Christmas without love, Christmas that is devoid of love, it's like you telling your friend or your, your neighbor that I'm having a desert but there's no sugar in it. Hallelujah. It's like you telling someone that you are eating but you are actually drinking water because there is no substance in what you are doing. So anything that we are doing during Christmas that is devoid of love is not Christmas in the first instance. Hallelujah. I'm sure if you take a survey, even walk on, the, on, on Union Street or walk in your neighborhood and ask anybody, Christian, non-Christian, believers, non-believers, boy, girl, old, adult, that what do you understand by Christmas? At least nine out of every ten we tell you is a season of sharing love. It's a season of extending love. It's a season why we show and appreciate people. That is what everybody knows Christmas to be. And that's why I'm saying that Christmas without love is actually not Christmas in the first instance. By the grace of God in this season that we have, which is today, that we are using to mark our Lord Savior's birth, because tomorrow, I mean, in the next few days, come Tuesday the 25th, the whole world will be celebrating Christmas. We want to actually look at what he did and what he asked us to do. And this will be tagged today's service, Greater Love. Hallelujah. Greater Love. And that is coined from that particular verse of the Bible we have just read. Hallelujah. So we're going to be seeing how this love relates to you and I. And I believe by the time we'll be finishing this service of today, every one of us will know 
and we understand the, the God's kind way of love, what it means to love, and how to actually extend this love to our brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. I quickly want us to read a long Bible passage, and from there, that is where the old message will be coming from. From the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, and I will read from verse 1 to 8. 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, from verse 1 to 8. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 to 8. And I read from here. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of an angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountain, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be born, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers longs, and love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bears all things, believe all things, hope in all things, endure all things. Love never fails. But whether there, is, there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish. I will jump to verse 13. And it says, And now abide faith, hope, love. These three things, but the greatest of all is love tell your neighbor love love what is love i know it's the most uh, spoken about word in the world if you use your google now and search just type the word love you will see the number of entries you will get out of google love is the most controversial word that i can think of sometimes you even mistaken lost for love Hallelujah. So we'll be looking at the word love from God's perspective this morning. This morning when I was actually looking at the types of love we have, I was thinking we only have three. But that's turned to hate. Hallelujah. That's turned to hate. I will not bore with us all those ones. But the God's kind of love that we're looking at this morning is the unconditional love. The one we saw from that Mark 13, 15. The love that has no strings attached. Hallelujah. That is the kind of love we'll be looking at this morning. And I pray and I believe that at the end of this short charge we are going to have, all of us will be screwed. We'll be, we'll be encouraged to love in the God's own way in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Christmas actually started over 2,000 years ago when God demonstrated his love towards human beings. As we all know from Genesis chapter 2, man lost it all in the Garden of Eden. Man lost all his authority, his dominion, his fellowship, that sacred thing that he used to have with God. He lost it in the Garden of Eden because of sin that we all know about. And the only way God thinks he can restore God, man back is to ensure that he sent his love. Hallelujah. God extended his love towards human beings by sending himself in the person of jesus to die on the cross for our sake so jesus came to the world with the sole aim of reconciling man back to god he came to this world with the sole aim of restoring that, uh, that fellowship that communion that we used to have with god so god started this kind of love by sending a part of himself to die for you and I. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans 5, verse 8. It said, But God demonstrated his love, his own love towards us, in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, I think if you look at other versions of the Bible, 
They, that word demonstrate means show, extend his love towards us in the person of Jesus to come and die on the cross for you and I. And when I was looking at that word, that he came to die, he came to die for you and I because he needs to restore us back to God. There is a way that God is expecting us to respond to this love. There is a way that God is expecting us to receive this invitation back to himself, back to where we fell from, back to where we used to be. For us that understand that particular passage in the book of Genesis, we, under, we knew uh, we, we, the, the way that God used to, I mean, man used to enjoy the fellowship of God. The Bible says that at every, in, in the evening time, God will come to Adam, and they will have communion. They will have fellowship. But immediately man fell. That communication, that, that, that relationship was severed. So in order for us to be restored back to where we came from, that is why we have that Romans 5, 8. So God is expecting you and I to respond in a particular way to this invite, to this special call. And that is what we are going to see in the book of 1 John. Hallelujah. No, John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. It says that, but as many that received him, he said to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. When, I'm, when I was looking at the word receive, receive is the same thing as the word accept. And accept can also be termed as the word uh, believe. So believe, accept, and receive. They, you, can be, you can use them interchangeably depending on how you want to phrase your sentence. Hallelujah. So the response, the right response that God is expecting from you and I to this invite of love is for us to accept, is for us to receive, is for us to believe. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, accept, believe, and receive. So God is expecting us to do these three things that I've mentioned. To accept this invite, to receive it and believe it. That is for me to be restored back to where who we fell from, hallelujah, as human beings. So that is one of the main things that God is expecting from you, that he's expecting from me. And once we accept and believe that, yes, he came to die for me, he came to restore me back unto himself, he's now looking for us to take the next step by reciprocating this love, hallelujah. Reciprocating this love. How do we reciprocate this love? Or what I mean by reciprocating the love is what we see in the book of John, chapter 1, 1 John 4, verse 8. That was what I, want to, I wanted to quote in the first instance. We need to reciprocate the love, the love that God, in this, God showed unto us in the first instance. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says that he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. You know, I, I was saying in the, when I was doing the short introduction that God sent a part of himself, love in the person of Jesus. So we can see from here that validate that God himself is love. And he that does not love does not know God. So God is expecting us in order for us to say, indeed, yes, I have received, accept, and believe this invite of love, we need to reciprocate the love. Hallelujah. In reciprocating the love of God, we will see the process in the book of Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. That was when the Lord Jesus Christ summarized the old law into two. Hallelujah. You know, before in the Old Testament, we have do not do this, you shall not do that, you shall not kill, you shall not. But when Jesus came, he summarized all those laws into two. The first one is you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. He said, this is the first commandment. Hallelujah. So to reciprocate this love, let's stay there first, sorry. To reciprocate this love, we need to love the Lord. If indeed we have received him, we have accepted him, and we have believed in his name. We have believed that, yes, he came to die on the cross for us. 
He came to actually save us from where we used to be, in the pit where we were, into his marvelous light. Then we need to reciprocate this love back to him by loving him with, all of, with the whole of our heart, with the whole of our soul, with everything that we've got, with our resources, with our mind, with our intellect. We need to love him with everything that we can say it is ours. Hallelujah. And to, what does it mean to actually love? Because this is a generic word. I can say I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, and that's it all. But what is actually in, 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 in this particular verse for us to be able to gauge ourselves, to know whether we actually or indeed we love this God. Hallelujah. Let's look at what Jesus himself said in the book of John 14, 15. John 14, 15. He said, If you love me, keep my commandments. So anybody can say, I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. But if you're not doing this, you're just making up. Hallelujah. If you're not doing this, we're just doing something else. In the face of God, in, in the sight of God, when he's looking towards someone that is loving him, someone that God can say that this is my son, my daughter, because he loved me, is looking for someone that is obeying his commandment day in, day out. Hallelujah. Are we actually obeying the word of the Lord? Are we actually carrying it out to the letter? Are we actually doing what he wants us to do every time, every season? I'm talking to myself as well. That is. Uh, an exercise that we need to go, I mean, do on our own in order for us to be, to be sure that indeed we have ticked that mark. I love the Lord. Or are we just saying it with the whole of, I mean, we, we just with our mouth? Are we just saying it for people to know? But you know, we can say it. We can do whatsoever we like. But in the sight of God, that's another record. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. His grace will be sufficient in the name of Jesus. The second one from verse 31 of Mark 12 says, and this Mark 12, 31. He said, and the second like it is this. You should love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. This is also another instruction that we can say we do we can just say and just leave it there but this is loaded hallelujah it's, it is indeed loaded love in a sense is not just by saying love should be seen hallelujah love should be seen not just mere saying you know the first command, I mean, the first instruction, the first way to love is to love God. And how to love God is to love him. I mean, how to love God is to obey all his commandments. This is the second one. But even in loving God, the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, it said that nobody can say he loves God without actually loving his brothers or his sisters. That's me paraphrasing. He said, if someone says, I love God, and ate his brothers. He is a liar. For he who does not love his brother or sister, in this case, whom he has seen, the one you are sitting beside now, how can you now say you love God, whom you have never seen? That's what I'm saying. That second one is loaded. So if I'm saying I love you, brother, I love you, sister. I mean, if I'm saying I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and I'm having issues with my brother and sister, then I don't even love God in the first instance. And I'll bring us back to the commandment, which is loving God in the first instance. When God, I mean, Jesus was talking to Paul, I mean, to Peter. You remember the story? In the book of, I uh, think, let me just 
Okay. John 21, yeah. John 21, verse 17. When he was talking to Peter, I called him the first time, Peter, do you love me? The second time, Peter, do you love me? The third time, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, I love you, and you know, I was even... He was about to be angry because why are you asking me the third time? He said, look at the last phrase there or sentence there. He said, feed my sheep. It's an instruction. To me, it's a commandment. And when I was actually looking at the word feed, someone will just think it's for you to spoon feed someone. But looking at the word feed, there are other synonyms for feed. And I will tell you, and it will shock you just now. Feed means strengthen, fortify support, bolster, boost, supplement, encourage, reinforce. Hallelujah. So can you come on tell me, is this, all these synonyms that I mentioned, I can put it in place of love and it will, it will match perfectly. So what Jesus was telling Peter here is that if indeed you are running mouth, sorry to use that word here, that you love me, then do what I've asked you to do. Feed. So I can say, strengthen my sheep, fortify my sheep, support my sheep, boost my sheep, supplement my sheep, encourage my sheep, reinforce my sheep. Pastor has said it many times here that all Christians are disciples. So we can fit into the place of Peter in that place and we know what sheep means in this context, not the physical sheep that we can see, animals. Sheep means all the children of God in that particular context. Hallelujah. So if the first and the second commandment is all about us being a friend, loving our neighbor, then we will now see the ingredient, the characteristics of that love for your brothers and your sisters. And that will help us in the name of Jesus to be able to put ourselves in line. Because there is also an advantage and that will be the end of this message of us loving our neighbor. But before then, let's look at the characteristics of this kind of love. Please don't let us be carried away. The first way to show love or to reciprocate this love is one, to love the Lord. And we love the Lord by obeying all his commandments. The second one to reciprocate this love is to love our brothers and sisters. And we're going to see the ingredient or the characteristics of loving our brothers. I will run through them because we have read it from the passage. That's the long passage we just read, First Corinthians 13. But I will start from verse 4 because that is where they broke, I mean, the, 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 the characteristics were broken down. The first thing there from verse 4, it said, love is patient. Hallelujah. Patient is the capacity to accept or tolerate someone or something without becoming annoyed. Hallelujah. So how long can you tolerate your brother? How long can you tolerate your sister's excesses without be, I mean, until you become annoyed, until you become, or, 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 or you are being worked on? Hallelujah. Love is patient. Love is kind. Kind to be kind means to have or show a friendly, generous, considerate nature to someone. Are we really, really generous? Are we really being considerate? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Love does not envy. To envy is to feel discontent or resentful. As a result of someone's health, possession, good luck, or things that happen to him, being envious of a brother or a sister, love doesn't do that. Love does not boast. Love will not talk in a proud way about his or her characteristics. I will not say I'm the best keyboardist in town. Sorry, I'm not picking on you, okay? Hallelujah. He will not say, because I am the best this, I am the best that. No. Hallelujah. Love is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. We all know what it means to dishonor. To bring shame on others because of maybe something happened or some 
um, or some, some one kind of things. Love is not self-seeking, not self-centered. It is me and me alone. That is not love. Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongdoings. I hope nobody is, have all this kind of uh, diary we used to keep then that brother so so and so slapped me on this day and that da da da. No. Love does not keep records of wrongdoings. Love does not delight in evil. Whenever evil, evil occurrence happens to someone, love will not be delightful in that kind of situation. Love always protects. Hallelujah. Love always trusts. Trust your brother. Trust your sister. I think I will dwell on this one a little bit. It has become the order of the day now in our own age that a believer will find consolence, will find trust outside the church wall. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. We are supposed to be our brother's keeper. We are supposed to trust each other. If we indeed say we love. Hallelujah. Love always hope. Hope is a feeling or expectation and desire for a particular good thing to happen. Love always hope for that. For a brother, for a sister. Someone is trusting God for something. Love will join faith with that person and say, I believe that this will happen to you. I believe that God's, I mean, God's plan and purpose will show. That is love. And the brother or sister will feel relieved. Will feel, yes, I belong. That is love. Love always persevere. Persevere means to continue in a course or action, even in the face of difficulties. If a brother is experiencing difficulties, love will, if you indeed say we love, the, be, the person will know that, yes, I've got backbone. I've got people around me that can help me through this phase of my life. I will stop there because of my time. What I've listed just now, there are 14. How many of us can give ourselves a tick in all these things that, yes, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing this correctly. I'm not judging anybody. As I've said, I'm talking to myself. It's a, a, a sober moment for us to reflect on and take action. Everything I've done thus far will be a waste if after today nobody even think about everything that we have said so far. It's for us to reflect because of the season we have. Because it's not too late. This is the right time for us to take action. And we'll know what action we need to take before the end of this message. In the name of Jesus. So, if you know you scored 80 and above, then kudos to you. You are Jesus' assistant. But if you know if you are like me, then let's work on it. Let's work on it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 40. I will quickly read from here. I will read from 40 to 45. He said, the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you do, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus, depart from me. You who cause, you are caused into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry? or test, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you. Then 45. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you do for any of the least of this, you have done for me. Hallelujah. That is why I read all those characteristics of love. So someone might be saying, yeah, I'm good, I'm good with God, I serve God with the whole of my heart. But if we see our brother and sister in need, 
need is not only material need. Someone can be in emotional need. Someone can need a support. Someone can need a, a, a helping hand. Someone can need someone to talk to, to open up his or her heart unto. Are you there for the person? That is love. And once you have done this to this little one, hope you all understand that the person that is being referred to as the king here is the Lord of hosts. He's the ancient of this. He said, once you have done this to any of this, you have done to me. Hallelujah. Say, you have done to me. You have done to me. I want us to think and meditate on what we've heard. You know, I started by saying John chapter 3, verse 16. God love, and he gave. Jesus himself said, he said, whatsoever I see my father do, I do also. And because he saw his father, that his father is a loving father, he also needs to give his, he gave his life. He said, I did not, he said, they did not take it from me. He said, I released it. Hallelujah. So, God did his own part. Jesus followed suit. If indeed we belong to God, if indeed we say we are of God, we need to do something about love. Love to God. You can't say you love God without loving your brothers and sisters. That's why I'm dwelling so much on loving ourselves. Because once we love ourselves, we will love God. Hallelujah. So if God has done his part, Jesus did his own part, then please let's find something to do, especially in this festive season, to show that indeed we love. To show that indeed we love. Hallelujah. Let someone be able to call on God and say, Lord, I bless you today because of a kind gesture of brother so and sister so towards me, towards my family, towards my career, towards my business. Hallelujah. Remember the Bible verse we read just now? He said, anybody that have done this to the least of this man, you have done towards me. I want us to bow down our head. Is there any way we are falling short of love. Is there any way these characteristics that we have listed, looked at, is not really showing in our life? Let's pray for grace this morning. Let's ask for grace. Is grace is sufficient? It can give unto us. It can help us. It can enable us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's ask for grace this morning. And please, let's all eyes close. The first prayer is that if you know that you have not indeed or truly accepted this offer, this invite to love, I think this is the right time for us to reconcile back unto him. This is the right time for us to say, God, I know you love me and you sent your son to die on the cross for my sake. Lord, I accept that offer of love right now. Rule my heart. Reign in me. In the name of Jesus. I surrender all to you. This afternoon. I want today to make that remarkable mark. That indelible mark in my life. I want to reciprocate the love you loved me to you as well. And to my neighbors. And to my friends. To my brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer, just signify by raising up your hands. If you have prayed that prayer, just signify. And if this is not for you, I want us to see, continue to pray that Lord God of heaven, help me. Help me to love in the way you want me to love. Because I have said there are different kinds of love. But the love we are talking about is unconditional love. The love that has nothing attached to it. Not because I will get this in return. Let's pray that God should help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lastly, I want us to pray for someone in this place this morning. You are hurting because of one act, 
want something that someone has done to you and it's really, 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 really difficult for you to let go, please receive the grace of God this morning. This morning. Receive the grace of God this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the grace in the name of Jesus. I told us that there is a blessing in love. Abraham received his Isaac by an act of love. Loving a stranger that he, did, he didn't even know that they are angels. Job got double portion of his resources because he prayed for his friends, the friends that were mocking him, the friends that were saying dangerous words unto him when he was passing through his trying times. Dockers in the Old Testament and New Testament, Jack back to life. Because of his of our good deeds, the Bible said that the widows cried unto the disciples that we, this woman must not go. I want us to pray that God open my eyes to that good thing I need to do, especially this season, that will bring back, that will that will, that will fast track my long awaited testimony. Let's lift up our voice and pray this morning, this afternoon, that that particular thing that I need to do, that kind act that I need to do, that love that I need to show to someone that will fast track my testimony for a release in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes to them in the name of Jesus. Let's just be on our feet as we join our hands with our neighbor and we just sing this song as I leave this place. I need you You need me we're all part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's family. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. name have we prayed Amen. and sing that tell your neighbor I love you with the love of the Lord and I will keep on loving you in the name of Jesus please let's jam our hands together as we have our seats